Um, our network consists of an awful lot of stuff. Um, 100,000 sensors out there doing a variety of different things. Um, everything from weather to traffic counting to um, uh, anything you can possibly think of. Um, and we also have something like 3,500 electronic signs out there. You've probably all come, along, uh, come across them at one, uh, one format or another, um, ranging from something in the central reservation, say, telling you about fog um, that you don't see, um, or to, to uh, a more, more restrictive smart motorway scenario. Um, that's how we used to do things. That's how we still do things, sorry. Um, it's a very business-to-customer model. Um, it's quite limited, uh, it takes a huge amount of investment to, to kind of roll that smart motorway technology out across the network in terms of management, um, but how do, we, how, do we, how do we reach further? Um, how do we help to address our safety targets, et cetera, moving forwards? Um, we've, our three imperatives are safety, top, number one, goes without saying, um, and then there's a bit of jostling below that uh, between customer and delivery. Um, my world is very much around CAV, obviously, but we, we kind of think of it from a, as a customer perspective. Um, we, we've carried out an awful lot of trialing activity, certainly through our road investment period one. There's an image there on the left-hand side for the A to M2, which I'm sure some of you may, or may, may not have been involved in. But it's really about how can we get gantry information into the vehicle um, and, and replicated in, in real time. So, and not just speed limits, but can we get roadworks warnings, all that kind of stuff into the vehicle to display it in a timely manner to the customer. Now we've got their little hand creeping into the picture. Um, we, as a business or as, as a government agency, um, we can't go and buy every member of the public a, a nice uh, handset to, to put into to their own vehicle. Uh, we recognize that everyone is connected um, by a different means, whether that's onboard technology, whether it's sat navs, or whether it's a buy a mobile phone. So uh, as part of our learning through this, we developed our own internal connected services roadmap, which be eventually became digital for customer. Um, this is a piece of work which we're embarking on in the new year, um, a two-year program of um, really gearing up our organization to provide better real-time information to the customer, not just in the smart motorway scenario, but enabling in-vehicle signage, whether phone or onboard displays, wherever you are on our network. Um, obviously, in our current restrictions, it will be advisory. Um, that's, that's one thing that needs, needs further evaluation as we move forward uh, in terms of the, the role of legislation in this space. Um, but it, we see it as an incredibly powerful tool to enable us to, to reach our customers more effectively, create safer, more informed journeys. Now, on the right-hand side, um, it's kind of what st we're starting to think about in terms of our evolution. So we, we know we can provide you with variable speed limits, we can provide you with roadworks information, we can provide you with diversion route information, that type of thing, to the, hum to the human eye. That's, that's easy to understand. Um, but how does an auto automated vehicle understand that sign? Never mind navigate the actual roadworks that, that are going to come further down the road. Um, so what is our, our role moving forward in that and how we can provide high quality data, not just for the human mind, but for the machine moving forward? So that's, that's something that we're, we're starting to evaluate now. We, from an operational perspective, we, we clear up the mess that others leave behind, I suppose, for want of a better phrase. Um, automation, connectivity does not mean infallibility. Things will still go wrong, people will still break down, and certainly over the next 10, 15, 20 years, whatever the best guess is, the mixed fleet scenario will pose us no end of problems. Uh, we will still have to clear up that mess. Um, it'll be interesting from, a, from an automated perspective if uh, if a traffic officer pulls up alongside a vehicle that's broken down by the side of the road and there's no driver, uh, starting to understand those types of nuances of, of how things might be um, uh, affected moving forward. But there is a potential, and I will caveat potential, that we move towards 
uh, a scenario where we no longer have roadside equipment. We, we kind of scale back, we, we strip it down back to just tarmac and, and lining. And uh, the vehicles, as was alluded to, there's a huge ecosystem around uh, potential data coming out of there, that they become our detectors, they become our data sources to, uh, to enable us to, uh, to, uh, to carry out our business, but also become our variable message signs and, and ways and means of providing uh, cus uh, customer information. Um, yeah, I'd just kind of like to, to pick up on what's already been said in the previous two um, presentations. Collaboration is going to be really important for a variety of reasons. Um, the customer doesn't care what road they're on, really, um, or who owns or who's responsible for that pit of tarmac. <laughs> Um, we've got a huge piece to do to start collaborating better um, with, with local authorities, uh, with devolved authorities. Data was going to enable us to have those more enriched conversations about cooperative uh, working. Um, <clears throat> we have got to get closer ties with uh, vehicle manufacturers. We've got to get closer ties with, with legislation. Uh, CCAV have done some wonderful work, but they've they kind of focused on the vehicles up until this point. We're actually we're we're all about the infrastructure, and we actually need to start tying that much closer together, so we can be better better aware and be provide a better service for these automated features that of, of, the, of the future or present and, uh, and near future. We're here uh, to accommodate trial activity. We have published safety guidance documents. We uh, understand our roads better than anyone. We're here to engage and uh, ensure that any trial activity happens in, a, in, a, in the safest possible manner. But we really actually want to do that so we can learn as, ourselves. We, don't, we can't get in, so underneath the hood of a, of a, of a vehicle. Uh, we can't understand the, the, the pitfalls and the shortcomings of their systems. But, uh, enable, but that sort of... Uh, open, transparent approach through trial activity, we can start having reciprocal conversations about the limitations that they, the, the sensors, etc., are coming across, and maybe the, the kind of learning that we can onboard and, and how we design and maintain our roads of the future. Um, no one can give me the, the right answer on, on whether what's the standard of white lining required for all these systems to operate, because Various manufacturers are doing things in different ways. We're using different technology and different systems and sensors. There's no one size fits all. No one can tell me what is the standard of white lightning. The most basic thing, what is the most basic uh, understanding of what sh what's the type of white lining you, you guys need on the road network? Um, so, you know, I'm all about collaboration. That's why I'm here. So please, if, you want, if you've got any answers to that, come and find me. But um, uh, I think that is me. So, yeah, thanks very much. Thanks, Andrew.